All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Word with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. And remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. And today, I got a very special guest for you. I'll give you a couple of words about my guest. Hip hop, creator, self-love, teamwork, all the way from Athens, Georgia. Everybody, put it, man, put your hands together for a squalet. What's yeah, up? what's up? <laughs> what's up, bro? I like those words. Those good words. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. No, hey, look here, man. We do our homework around here, man. And uh, I see. You know, just like um, reading over like the information about you, man. You out here doing, man, good in the hood. So if you out here doing good in the hood, man, we going to, you know, shout that mm-hmm. out. You know what I'm saying? So for sure. we've been giving people their flowers while they here, you know? Facts. All right. So, man, let's just get to you, you know what I'm saying? And pretty much, okay. you know, what you got going on. Um, the League of Step. Tell us yeah. about this, man. That's my baby. So uh, <laughs> the League of Step is a step league. So it's exactly what's in the title. Okay. Um, so basically how you have NBA, NFL, whatever sport, they have their leagues where teams compete against each other. Okay. We have that same structure, except it's step. Um, but aside from step, we use step for like an incentive and like for um, motivation for the kids to um, take our tutoring program, our mentoring program and our community service program. So the way it's structured is like you have certain milestones and goals that you have to reach um, with your grades, with your mentoring. You have a certain amount of community service hours that you got to put in. And right. once you do that, then you're allowed to step. Um, So aside from stepping, we do more of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And stepping is just a tool that we use to kind of get them a a way to express themselves. Okay. All right. No, you know what? Man, I totally understand, especially working with you. Uh, Yeah. Man, any way you can get them to express themselves uh, Mm -hmm. is pretty, you know, good in a positive way. Yes, sir. You know, stepping. um, I'm in a Greek organization, you know. I know all about the stepping, and I know I was told. To do too, <laughs> you know, so she told me you was a Sigma. Yeah, man. Uh, I am a member of Phi Beta Sigma. So while we on the subject of Greek organizations, you know, mm-hmm. um, like, are you part of one, or have like Greek organizations worked with your pro- um, program to help you know the kids with their steps? Um, in short, no, I'm not a member of a uh, Greek fraternity. Okay. I did, however, attempt to be a member of Alpha, Phi Alpha. Okay. Um, But at the time, it was just a lot going on at my school to where they couldn't have a line. And by the time that they could have a line, I was graduated. And, um, but I am, I am looking into that. Um, But I have a lot of Greek staff, like Bridget, one of my coaches are both Alpha Kappa Alpha. My co-partner um, and co-owner, Chantal Brown, is Sigma Gamma Rho. Okay. And one of my coaches who helps me with my male team is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha. Okay. So it's very Greek-oriented. I, I, I have, I'm close friends with a Sigma down here. His name is Gavin Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, he crossed at Fort Valley, so he comes in sometimes and does workshops and stuff like that. So we're very Greek-oriented. Okay. Well, no, hey, look, and, you know, seriously, you know, just as mm-hmm. a, you know, Greek, you know, man. It's, my whole thing is as long as you're like doing good, as I said before, mm-hmm. as long as you're doing good in the hood, man, all that yeah. other stuff really washes out at the end of the day. But I'm just glad that you have like other organizations working with you. And mm-hmm. you know, it's your personal goal to get to where you want to get to. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure you're gonna get that, brother. So Oh yeah, you know I've saying? definitely been approached, so I'm, I'm gonna be something soon. You feel oh, me? I'm pretty sure you have. You got them out here stepping. You got them out here doing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, somebody is pulling you to the side, but you know, man, yeah. look, keep going. I get a lot of that, you know. But alphas and sigmas are like when I first saw stepping for the first time, mm-hmm. it was it was sigmas. Okay. And um, my sister, who my sister taught me how to step when in like fifth grade. She was coached by Zetas. Um, so they called themselves like the Royal Sapphires. They were like baby Zetas. Yep. Mm-hmm. So when I first seen like males actually stepping, it was them boys in blue. And they was eight. <laughs> and when I tell you they was getting off, they yeah. was getting off. 
Yeah. Uh, so when I got to college, that's the only thing that I was familiar with. Okay. You know, with Sigma. But when I got there, it wasn't there. Okay. Um, you know, so after just doing research and looking into other stuff, you know, I started having a love for other, for Alpha, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, them, I always got respect to the Sigma, man. Like, oh, man. when it comes to stepping, man, y'all, y'all bad. Boy. <laughs> well, man, I appreciate it. And I'm pretty sure, you know, man, you know, by Better Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, you know, appreciate, you know, everything. Yes, sir. Doing. So, man, um, so I want to talk a little bit about your time at Alabama State. Uh, okay. Because, you know, you went to an HBCU and, um, you know, they've been in the news lately here and there. You have Kamala, Kamala, yeah. whatever you want to call it. I, I mean, man, we got an AKA in the office, y'all. You know <laughs> yeah, that, boy. That's all I got to say, you know. Yeah. But, I want to talk a little bit about um, HBCUs and like what life is really like because you know you hear sometimes in you know the mainstream media that you know okay this person who went to a HBCU versus this person who went to a PWI you know like the you know the whole you know degree thing or you know the whole sport thing or whatever you know nothing like that matches up but I want to hear things from your perspective, what your time was like at Alabama State and just at HBCU. And what has that done for you in your, you know, latter part of life? You know what? That's true. I I also coach, like a part of my um, step league, I also have a college team mm -hmm. and all of them attend UGA, which is a, a very well-known PWI. Mm -hmm. And their student life and Greek life is, completely <laughs> different from like what you would see at HBCU so that it kind of is like a true thing right. um, but I, I I needed to go to HBCU I, you know I was born in the hood but when I went to high school I went to a predominantly white high school okay. and you know so I wanted to be around my people so when I got the opportunity to play basketball at Alabama State mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was at the time but I started looking into it and I saw how involved it was with the, like the civil rights movement. Um, they were very involved with Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and a lot of um, civil rights um, situations that happened in, in the time. So I, that really intrigued me. Okay. So once I got down there, the energy, man, like it's like, it was just so, it was my people. Mm. Everybody was so ambitious and hungry. And it's like you could like relate and understand people. Gotcha. My teachers were black, mm -hmm. you know, like the staff was black, the cafeteria people were black, everybody was black. <laughs> like literally we might have had like 2% of <laughs> other, but my right. school was black, man. And it was like the most amazing thing that I could be around at the time. I really needed that. Going to my high school, it was a lot of, oh, they just like you because you're black. You know, they just like you because you play sports and this and this. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of racism. I'm, I might have been one out of three black people in my graduation class. You know, so I needed I needed wow. to go back to my roots. And in that process, man, I seen so many positive black people, man. So many like positive faces. A lot of people that had graduated from my school had went on and acquired success and fame. Like two chains went to my school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? There was a yeah. Ricky Smiley comes in and out of my school. There was a lot of people that came through ASU that acquired fame. There were a lot of people that you wouldn't know, but there was people working for the Pentagon, people working for the White House. Mm. There were black engineers. There were black scientists. There were black everything. And some of those people came through to my school. My, um, my theater professor, was um, Tania Stewart, who was in um, To Kill a Mockingbird okay. and The Heat of the Night. Okay. She had a cameo in Lottery Ticket with Bow Wow. So she was like a well-known actress. Mm -hmm. And she's the dean of like my theater department. You know what I mean? So it's like, it was so, in I was so engulfed with like my people and I needed that because at the time, man, I was having like an identity crisis. Just being around white, just be honest, been around white people for four years. Hey man, no, brother, look. You, you'll start to question yourself, you feel me? 
This is where with Tyrone, oh, man. If you want to say it, say it. You know, like, okay, I have yeah. no problems <laughs> with it. <Trust laughs> yeah. I understand. Believe me, I understand. But I no, needed it, man. But no, you know, I'm glad that you gave that perspective because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in mainstream media, you know, and as I said before, I went to a PWI, but most of my family uh, all mm -hmm. the PCU, and you know. I've always wondered what life would have been like, you know, going to, you know, all black college or what have you, mm -hmm. or a historically black college or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I'm just glad to hear your perspective. And it was dope, man. It worked out. And man, you know, look, I didn't say it. He just told y'all what it was. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's all love. And sometimes y'all, yeah. we just need to reconnect and get back to what we need to get back to so we can be who we are today. So shout mm -hmm. out to you, shout out to ASU, man, you know, Alabama. Yeah, 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 state. <laughs> All right, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up, that's what's up. So man, let's, oh, well, keeping on that path, let's, you know, talk a little bit about how you got into this music, man. All right, because yeah. that's part of why you here now, you know, let's talk yeah. about this music. Yeah. So like, how did you get started, man? What you got going on? Like your latest project, your newest project, all that. Tell us all about this music, bro. So I've been rapping since I was probably like eight, nine years old. Okay. Um, but like actively pursuing a career, I could say ASU is responsible for it because that's why I started. Um, but it just started out with, I had a public speaking class and the teacher was like, hey, um, we he wants you to showcase a talent for the class. And I went, oh, I can rap. And so I ended up rapping for the <laughs> class and then that turned into like, Hey, Squale, come rap in the cab. And hey, Squale, <laughs> they, they freestyling over here. Like, so my school started pushing me into like actually doing it. Yeah. Um, I ended up meeting people, you know, in the Montgomery scene, in the hip hop scene that was kind of giving me places to record. The school had a studio there. So ASU is really where I kind of like, I'm going to do this. Like, that's where, you know, that's where the revelation happened. Yeah. But I've been rapping since I was a, a kid, man. So. It's turned into me, you know, getting here, and I'm probably one of the premier artists in my city. Okay. You know, if you if you come here and say who raps, that a lot of people are gonna say um, Squale. Um, so Squale is the man. Yeah, man. But ASU, I definitely got to tip my hat off because that's that they definitely pushed me into, you know, the destiny I didn't know I had at the time. Um, so yeah, so I got an album that I just dropped back in September. Okay. It's called Gone for the Summer, Back for the Fall. Okay. I just dropped uh, like a three track EP in like early December. It was called Three for Three. Just three little nice little tracks that people can vibe out to. Um, and I'm currently working on music. I have collaborations that I'm working on. Right now it's a lot of, I'm doing a lot of feature stuff. Okay. Working with rock bands and just different type of artists. Yeah. To to do like Black Lives Matter type content and I got you. I got you. Um, stuff like that. I'm constantly recording though, but I I might you might not get another album for another year, but I'll have songs ready if I needed it. So yeah. what about videos? You gonna shoot a video for a song or something? Like oh get yeah, some type of visual. Yeah, my YouTube is 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 growing, um, but I have a, I have about twenty to thirty videos out. Okay. Um, and I, I pride myself on my videos. They, I, I try to get the best quality that I can get. I got um, you. Being an independent artist, it's, it's a little struggle, but. Okay. Yeah. So real quick, man, let's just stay in that lane for like a couple of mm -hmm. seconds and then we can jump out. Man, okay. I always like to talk to independent artists about like, what's the one thing most people don't really understand about being an independent artist because it's like, you know, it's like people just have their own idea of, well, man, yeah, man. they see this, they see that. Oh, well, mm -hmm. you know what? You doing this and you doing that. Like, no, nah, bro, like you don't really mm -hmm. get what it really is. So can you just give us like, what's one main thing about being an independent artist that most people don't even understand? What they don't understand <laughs> is that nine times out of 10, we don't have a million dollars behind us. <laughs> we don't we don't have a hundred people that work for us right. and come to come to work every day with the specific goal of getting 
me fans. Right. Um, and we don't have the the largest network and resources that it would take to compete. Um, ideally, to compete on a like major level. Um, but the root of it is money, man. Like. That's Most of the time, we just ain't got it. So, <laughs> right. you know, we, we hustling and we try, you know, so some stuff may not look super professional. Some stuff may not sound very, very professional. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we work really, really hard. Well, the independent artist works really hard. Well, man, let me just tip my hat to you, you know, and all the other independent artists. Uh, you know, I just want to stay here real quick. You know, I just want to give a shout out to MF Doom. If you're like familiar with his like- Yeah, I, I am. Art, I'm familiar. Man, independent, you mm-hmm. know, uh, was in the industry, the industry shunned him, left, yep. came yep. back, super villain, made mm-hmm. it his own, didn't do what he needed to do, didn't get the mill, but he got mm-hmm. what he needed in the end, which is the fan yeah. and respect. So, yeah. man, in all that, I'm gonna say, keep doing what you're doing. And Thank you. sometimes it ain't about like, man, look, everybody want to make it about this bag, but- And it really ain't, yeah. It really ain't about this bag. Yeah, <laughs> so, it really ain't. Bad. You know, I, that's the, the one stigma that I do not like. I don't like how people perceive the independent artists to not be successful because they're independent. And I, I can't stand that because every artist started out independent. probably independent, you know? So, every artist started out independent. So yeah, I, I hate that stigma, man. Yeah. It's like, I, I can be independent and, and be compared to Drake, but it's the, the closed-mindedness of like society makes it seem like oh, you ain't popping because you're independent. Some people are independent by choice. Some people are working to get signed. Everybody got their own journey, you know? So I, I just don't like that stigma. It's because we're independent, we don't make great music. Half the time, our music, because it's we actually than, care about our music, music is better than mainstream up. music. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just don't like that stigma. But, you know, hopefully over the years, it'll change, man. I just do me. That's all I can do. Hey, and that's all. Hey, look at and that's all anyone should ask, man. Just do you, bro. Just mm-hmm. do you. I feel that. So, man, let's jump out that lane. Okay. Let's jump into this lane with this partnership you got with Black is a Vibe. That's dope. Oh, see, Bridget, see, Bridget be on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Black is a Vibe is a clothing line by my boy Johnny. Shout out to Johnny. Uh, it's called Blood of a Nation, and Black is a Vibe is a, like a sub line under the umbrella of blood is a nation. So we partnered with him because black is a vibe. That's that's the most truest statement you can put out there. That's that's like that's the same as saying black is God or or black is amazing. That's true. You know, um and you know so he wanted to kind of like boost the morale and boost the perception that people have of black people and what some black people have of ourselves. Um so it's mostly just for self-love like black is a vibe black is everything you know like if you put everything together you get black and the i mean life started in darkness you know what i mean so (laughs) like black is is to me because i'm black black is everything and 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 not only is that like a mantra but black is a vibe if you perceive it a certain way can be a lifestyle you know like if you um love yourself enough your black is a vibe is your movement you know your vibe is your movement how people perceive you could be your movement just because you just you love yourself you know you could change somebody's life because you love yourself you know so that's why we decided to to ink that deal with johnny and you know so far so far so good man all right, that's what's up, man. So, like, uh, if people want to, like, you know, get any of that, where can they go get that? You can get that at bloodofanation.com. Bloodofanation.com. Yeah. Once you get on the site, you'll see all the different styles that he has, but there there will be a tab that says Black is a Vibe. Mm-hmm. I mean, he got hoodies, jackets, shirts, T-shirts, long sleeves, beanies, hats. <laughs> he got everything, man. Bracelets, anything you need. Bloodofanation.com, he got it. He be, he stay on it. All right, all right. Hey, man, just told you right there. Go hit, man. Look out for him. There you go. Yeah. 
All right. So um, what upcoming events or projects do you have come, um, you know, pretty much coming out? So right now I'm just promoting my album. Mm-hmm. I probably won't drop again until May or June because I want to give my album time to breathe and be out. Um, and if I feel like it isn't doing enough at that time, I won't drop. Um, so that, that's a hard question to uh mm. To answer right now, man, I'm working with the kids, man. We we got uh, uh, some important step shows coming up. Yeah. Um, we're doing something later this month. We're doing a Black History show for the United States Army. So we're gonna take a step show, and it's gonna air in front of the United States Army in February for Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Their first time seeing Step, you know, he's. Um, we're gonna introduce it to him. Our kids are involved. There's some big competitions that we got going up with nationals and a lot of community stuff that we're doing. So right now, my music, I got hundreds of songs just ready. So I ain't even really tripping for real. So (laughs) now I'm focusing on the kids and making sure that I can keep the mentoring stuff going and the community service going. Yes. Um, So hard to say, but I want to say if I'm going to drop, it's going to be around May or June. So just be on the lookout for it. Okay. So look, man, like if people want to get up with you, your organization, legal stuff, all that, like everything you got going on, how can people find you on social media? All right, my social media is Squale, S-Q-U-A-L-L-E, underscore Shottem, S-H-O-T-T-E-M. Mm-hmm. I hope y'all can spell. <laughs> but Squale, you can Google Squale and my stuff pops up, my yeah. music, my articles, my social media, everything pops up. If you Google it, The League of Step, you can go to thelegalstep.org. That is our website. You can subscribe to that. And it's also our Instagram, League of Step, Facebook, and all that stuff is exactly the same. So, nine times out of ten, if you Google The League of Step or if you Google Squale, everything will pop up for you. Okay. All right. That's what's up, man. So, brother, uh, I really enjoyed this conversation, man. Like, yeah, man, you lit, man. We got to talk some more. But, man, um, eventually I've come to the very last question of my show. Okay. Uh, the question that my show is known for, so I got to give it to you. Squale, what is the one word mm. that best describes you and why? Ooh. One. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, resilient okay Re- resilient um Why? i've been through a lot man like i was born in the struggle um i used to get in trouble as a kid i went from you know my mom was on drugs back in the day alcohol has plagued a lot of my family and a lot of my circumstances i've lost friends and family and a lot to the streets, you know, um, which is why I do what I do now because I haven't always been this person, you know, so hmm. resilient, man. Like, my, my my life could be a movie, man. If I went into details, mm-hmm. it, could be, it could be a movie. So to have been through everything that I've been through and to have overcome, I, I look at it as like I'm a resilient person and, you know, just I don't give up, you know. I go hard for what I believe in. Mm. I feel like, you know, if I get knocked down, I'm getting up 10 times, you know, so Mm -hmm. resilient is probably what I would choose for myself. Well, man, I'm going to stay on that, man. And I know this is really a word, but I'm going to make it a word anyway, because it's (laughs) what I want. So uh, student teacher, man. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why. Um, Like just listening to everything that, you know, you've been talking about and as you said like everything that you've gone through just like you know your whole life pretty much up to this point and what it is that you do now you really couldn't do what it is you're doing now if you didn't like learn what you needed to learn at a you know early age you know what i'm saying yeah you know fortunate for those kids and fortunate for the organization that you created and yourself you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. Man, you know, you out here, man, you got them kids out here stepping, doing things that they probably felt they wouldn't, you know, really be doing. That's true. And, you know, like, that comes with a lesson. And if you ain't a student, how you gonna learn? How you gonna learn? Exactly. So, boom, there you go, student teacher. 
I know it ain't a word, but I made it a word. So it's a word today. <laughs> man, it's, it's, all right, man. Look here, brother. I have enjoyed right, speaking to you, man. That brings us to yeah. the end of the show. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Ty Brownlow. This is World with Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. You can follow me on social media, World with Ty Brownlow, on Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can find me on YouTube. And man, That's pretty late. much World with Ty Brownlow. Twitter, you can find me on Ty Brownlow TV. Or oh, man, forget all that. Just go to my website, tybrownlow.com. Get this interview and other great interviews. Man, Squale, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. All right. One love, man. Stay up. I'm going I'm gonna tap in with you after this because I gotta get you down here. I don't <laughs> I don't know what it'll take, but if we got you down here because they don't see many sigmas, that would be yeah. lit. All right, hey bro. Hey we are <laughs> all right, hey, hey, hey man. That dude. I love that, man. That Thank was, you, man. That's what's up. Uh look here, dude. Um I will shoot Bridget my info, man, and dude, okay. whatever you got going on, man. Hey, I'm working remote, so I can be anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so, dude, holler at me, man. I would love to come down to Georgia and, you know, man, holler at the kids, just, you know, do some community work and, man, just see what you got going on, bro. That'll be lit. I'm going a, I'm to a just go and put the bug in your ear now. I yeah. know when it warms up, so probably March or April ish. Okay. We're working on a Greek day for the kids. Okay. And I'm willing to get you down here, man. Like, I'll get you a ticket, hey, hotel, okay. whatever. Bro, I'm telling you right now, seriously, on everything, man, I will do that shit. I will show okay. up with what I need to show up with. Talk mm -hmm. to the shorty, kid, man, little whatever, whatever. Let me know the dates. You let me know the dates. Yeah. Man. That's the type of person I am, dude. I'm a date okay. dude. All right, man. Okay.